as long as I remain the public innovator, I will keep analyzing the public policies and always give my opinion about that. Good afternoon, journalists. Today, I have organized this press conference as I would like to express my views on Millennium Challenge Corporation Compact Deal, which has been signed by Nepal government with the Millennium Challenge Corporation, which is best in the United States of America. I would like to request you all the journalists to relay this press conference message to U.S. Embassy, which is residing in Nepal, and to the United States of America. I have used following documents on my research. Agreement between Nepal government and MCC of United States of America. I have used this book. I have used all the implemented programs of 48 countries around the world. It starts from Albania, to Togo, to Zambia, to Zimbabwe. I'm sorry for that. In addition to this, I have used all the data for my country, for our country Nepal, which has been prepared by MCC with the reference of World Bank. I have used Global Knowledge Index of 2019. I have used Global Knowledge Index of 2018. I have used Global Knowledge Index of 2017. And the pro I have used the final book, Prospects of the American Age. I have been checking the inputs and outputs of this MCC deal to countries where the projects have been implemented and are being implemented. I found that the MCC has made a very good impact on the other 48 countries who are part of the deal as it attempts to reduce poverty through its innovative missions. After its creation by the U.S. Congress in January 2004, the MCC has tried to deliver smart U.S. foreign assistance by focusing on good policies to promote economic growth, reduce poverty, and strengthening institutions. I would like to thank the administration of the MCC for your cooperation which has empowered the economy of the countries you have worked with so far. The MCC is committed to delivering sustainable economic growth and poverty reduction in our country, Nepal, throughout the entire life cycle of its investments in transmission lines and road maintenance, which is welcoming step to aid cooperation with the United States of America. The MCC's Evidence-based approach is rooted in the mission and its comprehensive results framework seeks to measure, collect, and report on the outputs, outcomes, and impacts of MCC investment, which is completely on behalf of our country, Nepal. The current project, which has been agreed, includes electricity mis uh, transmission mission of $398 million and 200 uh, thousand US dollars. Transportation project of 52 million dollars. Program administration of 40 million dollars and monitoring and evaluation of 9 million dollars. The MCC has approved these investments in Nepal which can create lots of employment opportunities for the Nepalese citizens. Thus, I would like to thank the MCC and the United States of America for this grant to our country Nepal. In contrast, I have so many issues with this agreement and the nature of the program the MCC has for Nepal. Such problems which may hinder our country in the long term despite the amount of money potentially being invested in Nepal. For example, number one, I have not found the primary reason for selecting MCC for Nepal grant by the United States of America. Number two, 
I have not found the reason for selecting transmissions line, lines and road maintenance as the deals men preside. I have not found, number three, I have not found the reason for implementing this project on top of the United Nations Development Program Sustainable Development Goals 2030 as it feels like a duplication. The United Nations Development Program and Sustainable Development Goals have been adopted by the UN states, UN member states since 2015 as a universal call to action to end poverty, protect the planet and ensure that all people enjoy peace and prosperity by 2030. As a result, the MCC should either give money to the UNDP, the same, same amount the MCC is planning to invest in my country, Nepal, or wait until the end of 2030. Number four, our country, Nepal, and the MCC agreed to work for electricity transmission project and road maintenance project, whereas sustainable development goals number seven and number nine, nine provide affordable and clean energy, industry, innovation, and infrastructure. Thus, we are duplicating the same goals. Number five, I have not found the data of electricity, transmission, and road maintenance on the data set, which is considered to evaluate any country for a, for a MCC grant. Number six, I have not found the reason for the implementation this project before 2030. If the government agreed to implement this before the UNDP SDG 2015, then it would create lots of impacts as there was no similar program for our country, Nepal. There are 49 countries in the world, in, including Nepal, which have used the MCCs, and out of them, 10 countries have implemented this after 2015. The other 39 countries closed this deal before 2015, which seems very appropriate. Number seven, I have found contradictions in the data collected by the MCC for Nepal with the data I have from the Mohammed bin Rashid Knowledge Foundation MBRF, which was prepared in collaboration with the United Nations Development Program. For example, the index of government effectiveness is better in MBRF than MCC. Number eight, countries of our region like India and Bangladesh where there are numbers of poor people, more so than Nepal, are not implementing this. This is another valid reason not to use it before 2030. Number nine, since the countries like India and Bangladesh are not adopting this policy at the moment, we will not get the regional integration option later if we like to extend the MCC through its third policy, regional integration. For example, the current five countries selected for regional investments are from Western Africa as follows. Benin, Burkina Faso, Ivory Coast, Ghana, and Niger. In the case, we would like to empower the country through the economic cooperation with the, within the region using the regional integration method, then it will create a problem for not having such programs in our region. Sri Lanka is found to be interested, but we do not have much economic relation with the state. Our main economic collaboration is with India and Bangladesh. Thus, without having their involvement, it might create a problem in the future, even though the MCC is implemented in Nepal only. Number 10, our country has signed a compact agreement, which is clearly a five-year agreement, but MCC 2017 data and agreement based on this needs to be updated with data of 2019, which shows our country's government effectiveness as better. Thus, we need to verify that the project related to electricity transmission lines and road maintenance are still required and important. Number 11, I have serious doubts on the data published by the MCC on its website. Data taken by the MCC is completely wrong in some categories. Like the population of Nepal is decreasing after 2013 and again after 2019, which is not correct as per the latest data by other sources. Number 12, as per the agreed project investment, 
we are receiving USD $398 million for the electricity transmission project. However, it is important to have more investment in hydropower rather than in transmission first. Even if we, if we use that money amount for construction of hydropower, then we can only have 113 megawatt of electricity, which is very low. Thus, either we exceed the investment of the MCC for hydropower or just cancel the amount for the transmission project only. I have gone through the webpage of the MCC and I quote, this investment not only support stability and prosperity in partner countries, but also enhance American interest. Now, I have a serious point as I wanted to know that the meaning of American interest is in detail as it has not been written on the website. Again, number 14. Again, I, I again continue and quote, with cost-effective projects, lean staff, and an evidence-based approach, the MCC is a good investment for the American people. Again, I have a doubt with the United States of America, which is investing money in Nepal, apparently for the American people, which is clearly shown on the same page. Number 15, we cannot bring American employees to Nepal and put them in danger as they have many enemies like the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria, ISIS, Al-Qaeda, and the Taliban. Such groups might use our land to react to the United States of America by taking action on the American people while working in the rural areas where our government cannot give them security. Thus, American employees should not be accepted in this deal. Last and number 16, section 7.1 of the agreement says, the government will proceed in a timely manner to, the com to complete all of its domestic requirements for this compact to enter into force. The parties understand that this compact upon entry into force will prevail over the dom domestic laws of Nepal. This is an unaccepted condition by the United, Nation of United States of America thinking of prevailing other countries' law and its sovereignty. Now, to the United States of America. Our country is very safe as we do not have any enemies around the world, but the situation of the United States of America is different as they have many. I remain concerned that the groups such as ISIS, Al-Qaeda and Taliban have intent to carry out large-scale attacks in the US and against its citizens of any kind. As such, I wonder if those groups would ever think of coming to Nepal in order to harm American citizens working here. Unlikely as it may be, if the situation ever became the case, then this would be the worst possible outcome from the MCC deal. Now, to the Ambassador of the United States of America. His Excellency Randy Berry, I have seen your efforts, meeting with political leaders of Nepal, an explanation about the MCC in the Nepali language, but I believe this is completely against the norms of diplomacy. Excellency Randy, I have also gone through your explanation video and the MCC agreement in detail. Excellency Barry, based on your documents and your explanation, I'm not personally satisfied. I'm personally not satisfied that the MCC intends to return to the United States of America following the completion of its project. Thus, I'm very much hopeful and confident that Nepal government which is led by Right Honorable Prime Minister, His Excellency K.P. Sharma Oli, will reject the entry visa for the MCC to Nepal. Thank you, thank you so much, and God bless Nepal. Thank you. I again request to all the journalists to 
make this uh, news in video or in writing and send it to United States of America and its embassy residing in my country, Nepal, as well as to the Nepal government, which is led by Right Honorable Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli. Any questions, journalist? Do you have any questions? It is very important to explain to the world, not only to America, what they are doing here in Nepal. We respect the American investment in country. We look forward to working with American people. We look forward to working with American government in order to empower the economy in both countries. But regarding the sovereignty, regarding the politics, regarding our uh, law, nation, politics, we don't want any country touches our sovereignty. Any country touches our social sector and political sector journalists. This is all uh, information that we need to send it to American Embassy uh, as well as to United States of America. Thank you so much uh, for your time here uh, during my conference. I look forward to working with the journalists. I look forward to working with all the people who are in opposite of this MCC deal. And let's, let's work together. Let's give the message to the government of my country, Nepal, uh, so that they reject this MCC project, and I'm ready to. I'm ready to debate with American ambassador if he wants to. I'm ready to debate with any other political leader who are supporting MCC deal in Nepal. I look forward to uh, debating with them wherever it is, either in Nepal or in the United States of America. I, I think Pune Gautamji is going to support in this mission as well, right? I agree with you. Thank you so much. I have lots of lots of documents. And uh, after this conference, I might be, I might be uh, talking with the journalist regarding my opinion in Nepali language so that we can deliver my message to the people of Nepal staying inside this country and outside this country. Any Thank you. Uh, I have one question. Uh, please. Uh, although it is a debatable issue, right, but uh, the Nepal government is eager to pass it from the parliament. If it is passed from the, from the parliament, uh, what do you think that uh, you like people will, uh, will be doing uh, thereafter? I'm complete uh, a public innovator. I don't go and protest in the street. I always do the research and uh, share my opinion to the government and the people of Nepal. I know our government uh, is willing to pass because we're going to get lots of investment so that it can create lots of opportunities in Nepal. But we people, we people of Nepal, we have been facing the problem since the Maoist revolution in this country. Now we have taken that out. Now we are putting our economy in a great way. And we don't want any country interfere our politics. If the government wants to, if the government of Nepal wants to implement this policy, they have to change it. They have to change and they have to follow the sovereignty of my country. So they have to reject bringing the American people in my country. If American people come in this country, or whatever in Dading or Sangza or Gorkha, you're going to see journalists, the international terrorist group like Al-Qaeda, Taliban, and Islamic State of Iraq, and Syria, ISIS, they will come and they will kill the American people here in this country. Once the American people died or once they killed the American people in my country, the American army will come and take that people out. That's how we can debate how they can bring American army. They haven't written anything like we are going to bring the American army in this country. But there is a tricky reason, so we have to be very careful on that. And you have to uh, see the uh, one incident which was uh, carried out, which, which was the biggest uh, terrorist incident in the world after World War II, that is 9-11 uh, attack by Bin Laden. Bin Laden was born in Saudi Arabia when he was, in, he was staying in Abbottabad, Pakistan. American army came and took, him, took his life away. So we all have to be careful and we have to give the suggestions to the government. Not by protesting on the street, okay, that's going to be the political agenda of the people, they can do it, but it is really important 
to give the ideas so that the government can think about it. Any questions after that? Thank you. One more question. Uh, One more question. Last question. What do you think then the government is uh, disregarding the people's sentiment? No. There might be some political uh, issues. When we explore this agenda in the market, you people are seeing the people which are in favor of this agreement and there are some people against to, uh, this agreement. That might be the political tool where you can judge the people. You can judge the people so that you can find who is working on behalf of my country, of your country, of our country, and who are not working for our country. This is the right time to judge the political leader of this country, Nepal. This is the right time. Who are supporting this agreement? We need reason why they are supporting it. I'm not supporting this agreement, so I'm ready to give my explanation. And the government is the uh, is yet to government is yet to decide whether to implement or not. But this is the public debate, and the government has not implemented it. And I'm very much hopeful and confident that my uh, Prime Minister of Nepal, Right Honourable His Excellency K P Sharma Oli, will think about it and will stop this deal until and unless the MCC and the United States of America changes the agreement from compact to threshold. Thank you. Thank you so much.